Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. And this one is going to be a bit of a special video, not necessarily looking all around the farm, what's going on on the farm. It's more to do with a recent TV program that aired a couple of days ago on Channel 4. The name of the program was The Big British Beef Battle. And ever since it aired, my Twitter feed and all social media have been full of of UK farmers saying we've just got to stop this nonsense. It's where people um, decide to do a program on the effects of beef, climate change and how we should cut out red meat from our diet but they are looking at global figures and not actually in the UK where actually livestock production has been going on for years. Livestock farming because of our topography, because of how we live in this uh, the land available in this country. It's worth remembering 65% of UK farmed land is best suited to growing grass. That's why we have a livestock industry in this country. So what I'm going to do on this video is go down and look at the actual details, how they relate to British beef production, rather than this global figure which is pretty horrendous for the amount of CO2 produced for a kilo of beef. Very different in the UK. So what I'm going to do now is move to another part of the farm where the cattle normally live. Unfortunately, they're all inside on another farm. They're housed inside over the winter. It's December and we do have some sheep here, some fat lambs just on this bit of grass now. Uh, but I'm going to move to where the cattle normally live on some other uh, pasture land we've got on the farm and go into more detail there. Now there's a hidden corner of the farm up here, I don't normally come down here, but I just wanted you to have a look at how grassland works on a mixed farm like ours and how we farm arable and grass and the reasons why. And I'm doing that because I want to explain why the global figures, when I look at those again, why they are so different to what we do in the UK. And the clue, which unfortunately researchers in the UK don't seem to pick up on, beef right at the top. There you go, 99 kilogram of carbon dioxide equivalents per kilogram of food produced. Terrible. But 23 kilos of it is land use change. That does not apply in the UK. That is what's happening Brazil, Argentina, where they're chopping down forests and changing land use so they can produce beef. But here in the UK, we have produced beef, had livestock farming for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years, because we're very lucky to live in a part of the world that is absolutely ideal for growing grass. It gets a bit annoying at times when you're trying to do a harvest and it keeps on raining. But if you live in the UK, and I include Ireland here, we're right on the edge of the Atlantic and we have low pressures rolling in and it rains quite a lot. And we also have sort of steep banks like this and we have a plentiful water supply and we can grow grass, no problem at all. That's why we don't grow olive trees. They do that in southern Spain or, you know, Italy and things like that. We here, grass is what we can do really well. And therefore we can have cattle graze and sheep on our hills and it's what we do fantastically well. We do not have to do land use change. It's here. And that is our history. You've only got to look at sort of cattle breeds, Aberdeen Angus. We run Sussex cattle here. You can go through a whole list. We have Highland cattle, belted Galloways, because that's what the UK farming is based on, livestock farming. Now, on a mixed farm like this, because we also do a bit of arable, we use the land in how it is best suited for what crops it's going to grow. And if you look here, there's the arable land. That's in wheat production. And you think, well, why don't we continue it all the way down? And then you look at this fence line and you look how steep that ground is. That is inaccessible to a tractor. You cannot, I cannot I not even think about combining that or having a tractor on there. We can't even run up and down with a tractor if we want to top it or anything. Livestock, they don't care. Cattle, sheep, they run around there. No problem at all, even though it's at, you know, crazy angles. So number one on this, 
very different land use because our topography, our climate, is just blessed for livestock farming here in the UK and Ireland. Well, the cattle we run here are Sussex cattle. Um, we have an organic herd, all this grassland has never had fertiliser on it or any sort of treatments. Well, I bought the farm in 2002 and many years before that. So it's organically registered with the Soil Association. And we have around 40 cattle normally grazing across here. It's about 110 acres. So not a very high density of cattle, but it is ideally suited to having cattle on here. Down the bottom, you can just see there's a, uh, there's a brook so they drink from that and they're very happy here to say the least. Now if I look at actual beef production in the UK well 2022 production 928,000 tonnes of beef was produced in the UK and we also imported 233,000 uh, tonnes of beef mainly from the EU and our main imp uh, place we import beef from is Ireland, which is a huge industry in Ireland, beef production. And about 180,000 tonnes, of that 230,000 tonnes is from Ireland. So weirdly, we export about 110 tonnes of beef. And that means in the UK, we consume around a million tonnes of beef. If you, it's very confusing actually trying to find the exact amount we consume in the UK because it's measured in two different ways, mainly grams of meat uh, consumed per person per week or per day. And you have to also remember those tonnages are the carcass weights, and that includes all the bone and fat that we don't actually consume. So of that tonnage, say million tonnes we produce, it's about 650,000 tonnes of meat. And that is what's sold in the UK. Now, very interestingly, when I did some research, I wondered how, where is that imported beef comes from? Well, I say it's Ireland. And where this sort of graph comes from, where this terrible beef herd and land use change, where everybody's getting really concerned about it, is it's Brazil. When they're cutting down the rainforests and they're growing soya and that sort of thing, that is what shoots up the CO2 content for every kilo of beef produced. I tried to find the figures of how much meat we're importing from Brazil, it's around 20,000 tonnes a year. So you are talking about 2% of the beef on sale and consumed in the UK comes from those areas. So it is not a concern. Why, like Oxfordshire uh, County Council bans beef on the menu because they're worried about the climate impact, so they wanted to cut out red meat from all schools or anything that the council was dealing with. It's 2% of our meat comes from those areas where those feeding lots are and we see on the news and all these documentaries. 85, 90% comes from fields like this that are suckler herds that are raised organically or with minimal inputs. And yet we're now, because of programmes like this, being demonised here in the UK as beef farmers because we're killing the planet. Nothing could be further from the truth. Interestingly, if they didn't use our world data chart, there is another chart produced here in the UK. But they don't use that figure for whatever reason. I turn to it. And this is a chart from the Agriculture and Horticulture Development Board. And it has very different figures to that global um, footprint of the CO2 produced. Now, on this chart for the UK, the average kilos of CO2 equivalent per kilogram of carcass weight is 23.4 kilos of CO2, a quarter of that global figure that, you know, that programme just used on Friday and most people refer to, most people in the British media who do no research on it. If you look at the lowest in the UK, so they actually give the banding of that, how they got that average, highest 55 kilos, there is always somewhere in the UK, perhaps there's a feeling like, I don't know, but at highest 55, but the lowest 5.6 kilos of CO2 equivalent per kilo of meat produced. If I look back at that other chart on global figures, that is equivalent of olive oil. And there's a whole lot more nutrients in a kilo of beef than there is in olive oil. And yet, as I say, we're getting demonised as British beef farmers because we're polluting the planet. Utter nonsense. And I would say here, you couldn't get a lower impact 
for beef farming that we do on this farm. There is no artificial fertilizer put on. There's just the cattle graze here naturally, and then when they get up to killing weight, they go and then we breed up from the young stock born that year, and it's just a cycle. Now, the other elements I want to talk about is something called the biogenic carbon cycle. I've spoken about this before. I've done a video basically along the similar lines back in January 2021, but I think it's worth repeating. What people need to realise is this grass, I don't have to put fertilisers on it because it, as I've explained, we have this fantastic climate in this country and cattle and sheep are ruminants and they are extremely clever fantastic design that they can consume the cellulose of the grass and turn it into nutrients they can add bulk and then they go up to killing weight and we can eat them and we can use the bone and skin and all sorts of parts of those animals and it you repeat and the bit that everybody get upset about on the environmental side is because the cows belt and fart methane what they're not realizing is a cow isn't like born with 10 tonnes of methane inside it and it says, oh, no, well, my, I'm going to do with my life is belch out this methane from nowhere. No, it is a completely natural cycle. They eat the grass, the ruminant stomachs ferment that grass, break it down and during the process, the CO2 that the grass has absorbed is released as methane by the cows but they from eating the grass and the cellulose grow muscles bone get bigger to the point where they're good to eat and they release this methane into the atmosphere that methane breaks down there are different figures 10 years in the report i've seen i've seen others say it's 20 years but it does break down in the atmosphere and what people forget it is only come from eating that grass. This is not locked up carbon that is being released into the atmosphere as we do with fossil fuels that have been locked underground for thousands of years. No, this CO2, this methane, has come from the carbon that the grass has absorbed. And therefore, if you came back in 100 years, if I keep the cattle numbers down here at 40 cows and you tried to measure the impact on the planet for the excess CO2 release, it would basically be the same from the year 1900 to year 2000. It doesn't get any bigger. It's a natural cycle. That is not the case with these food lots, etc. That is like feed um, housing cows in eat as much as you can buffet. And if you're given them ex food that never runs out, they're just inbred to carry on eating. To, and the um, person who runs those feeding lots is keen to get them to the killing weight as soon as he can. So they do that by feeding better food like soya, etc. And it's a completely different way of beef production. And I don't like it as much as anybody else. And that is where the environmentalists need to understand there is completely different ways of producing beef in this world. It's a bit like looking at that graph and saying, oh, beef's terrible, ban beef. It's like saying, we're going to ban all cars in the world. That will sort it out. They all emit CO2, go. But here in the UK, the car we're sort of running around in because of the way we farm beef it's like an electric car and in this case when it's organic and there's no nitrogen on it's like an electric car running on solar and wind it's not really having an impact on the planet if you look at those feeding lots in brazil from a simplicity point of view from a um, you know car point of view they're running around that's a cadillac escalade v8 supercharged or something and they're doing fifty thousand miles a year in them and that is a bad way so that's the same sort of thing looking at it as in car land it's getting rid of those gas guzzling cars and keeping the electric cars and that is how we farm beef here in the uk and ireland and i just wish documentary makers would understand that not all beef is the same and these researchers who do these documentaries actually look at UK figures and actually shine a light on how amazing it is how we farm in this country and Ireland and how we should celebrate the livestock sector in this country, how it can produce this incredibly nutritious food with minimal impact. 
instead of getting hold of the global figures and just thinking it's just the same as these food lots in America and Brazil and all the rest of it. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of beef production in the UK, why I think it needs championing, and farmers are just fed up that they're getting the blame for global warming. It's not the cows, it's people. It's low, such a big population and they all like eating meat and it's people trying to profiteer from beef production by putting these big feeding lots and ignoring the impact on the climate and just getting beef out on the table as quick as they can. Here, I'm a custodian of this land. There's a document that says I own it. Well, I don't really own it. I, I do at the moment, but I'm a custodian to look after it for the next generation. And the best way I can do that is to quietly graze cattle on here with no inputs. My job as a farmer is actually to control the amount of grazing. So we never overgraze it. It locks up carbon. This is a natural carbon uh, capture type of industry. And that's all I'll do to pass on to the next generation. I want the British countryside to look just like it does today. It is glorious. And it's like that because of British farming. The farmers who care about the land and they care about the environment and they care about their animals. Stop demonising farmers. It's not us, it's man and our addiction to energy that's really the problem of climate change. So a bit of a rant, there you go. Hope you understand British farming a little better after this video. If you do, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.